So what is the cytoskeleton? Well, it's very much like its name suggests. It's the skeleton and cyto, meaning cell, means it's the skeleton of the cell. Cyto might make you think cytoplasm, okay? It's found in the cytoplasm of eukaryotic cells. Now, that's quite important. When we're talking about the cytoskeleton, we're talking about eukaryotic cells. It's found inside of them and it's attached to the cell membrane. Well, that's all cool, but what is it actually for? Well, let's get into the main functions. So there's four main functions of the cytoskeleton and we're gonna have a look at each of them one at a time. The first function of the cytoskeleton is to maintain cell shape. Two specific examples I can give you are red blood cells and nerve cells. You might have come across these before. Red blood cells have a shape or a structure that's called a biconcave disc. It's essentially like if you imagine a donut that where the hole in the middle hasn't gone all the way through. So it sort of has that concave shape and it's uh, sort of round and flat like a dinner plate or a disc. That's why we call it the biconcave disc. That shape is assisted by the internal structure of the cytoskeleton and what it does is it increases the surface area to volume ratio for the red blood cell, which then helps it to increase its efficiency of diffusion of oxygen into and out of the cell. So the other one is the nerve cell. Well, the nerve cell has, as you can see, a very different shape to a red blood cell. It has this long, thin section called an axon, and it's due to the cytoskeleton that that structure is possible. The second major function of the cytoskeleton is cell movement. And when we're talking about cell movement, we mean within the cell and the whole cell itself. Let's start within the cell. Remember the chloroplast. Here's a blown up diagram of a chloroplast. It's found inside of plant cells and carries out photosynthesis. Now I've got here a very simple cell with some simple little green ovals to represent chloroplasts. Now, the cytoskeleton is holding those chloroplasts in place. But when the sun is shining from a particular angle and the, those cells are receiving light from a particular angle, the cytoskeleton is able to manipulate and move those chloroplasts to hold them in the correct orientation so that they'll receive the best possible amount of sunlight. And if the sun is then moving and is now the light is coming from a different angle, well, the cytoskeleton is able to move the chloroplasts into a different orientation to maximize how much sunlight they're receiving. That's an example of how the cytoskeleton is involved in cell movement. The other one is called cytoplasmic streaming, which is where the chloroplasts are actually able to move all the way around the cell to an actual different location within the cell. And they move along the cytoskeleton and it's called cytoplasmic streaming. Another example of where the cytoskeleton assists in movement inside of the cell is in cell division when the chromosomes are being organized and separated as part of a process called mitosis. The chromosomes are held in place by what we call the spindle fibers or spindle apparatus that you can see here in blue. They are made of the same material that the cytoskeleton is made of. They hold the chromosomes in place and then pull those chromosomes apart so that a sister chromatid from each goes in each different direction. And that is an example of movement within the cell that is carried out by the cytoskeleton. And then an example of the whole cell movement occurs straight after the chromosomes have been separated in cell division, when the cell itself actually cleaves itself into two new cells. That process is called cytokinesis. What happens is the cell membrane actually folds in on itself 
as you can see in this diagram. And then it eventually pinches itself into two brand new cells. So it's one cell where the membrane has folded in on itself, pinched itself into two new cells. That's called cytokinesis. It's a major part of cell division. And it's the cytoskeleton that's actually helping to pull the cell membrane in and cleave the cell into two. Remember that key point, the cytoskeleton is attached to the cell membrane, which is what makes this possible. And then the final example of whole cell movement due to the cytoskeleton is in cells like a paramecium or a sperm cell. This is a paramecium, it's a unicellular eukaryotic organism, only made of one cell. And all around its cell surface, it contains these things called cilia. Cilia are these sort of hair-like protrusions that poke all outside of the, out, the exterior of this cell. And they all pulse in unison. They all move back and forward, back and forward. And so what that allows the cell to do is to move around all on its own. The whole cell moving around thanks to the cytoskeleton. The sperm doesn't have cilia. The sperm has what's called a flagellum. It's a weird word. That's the tail, basically. It's called a flagellum. The mitochondria are the energy producing organelles. They're all around here near the base of that flagellum. And their job is to drive the flagellum like a propeller. And so that allows the sperm to move around and Thanks to that flagellum, which is made of the same components as the cytoskeleton, the whole cell is able to move. So there we have it. The cytoskeleton can help with cell movement. The third main function of the cytoskeleton is to hold the organelles in place, which we've already seen a little bit previously when we just looked at the chloroplast. Here's a diagram here showing you cell membrane, cell membrane, Inside we've got our cytoskeleton and here we have a mitochondrion and that mitochondrion you can see is held in place by what sort of looks like a scaffolding of cytoskeleton. So holding the organelles in place is an important function of the cytoskeleton as well. Last but not least, the cytoskeleton strengthens cells. It provides structural support inside that adds extra strength for the cell. A pretty straightforward one. So we've just talked a lot about the function of the cytoskeleton. Let's talk a little bit about its structure. First of all, this point, the cytoskeleton is a dynamic structure. Dynamic means it is changeable. It's able to increase and decrease. It's not static, it's changing and changeable. It's made up of subunits that can be rapidly removed or inserted. If I bring back this diagram, this shows two of the main components. There are three, but it only looks at two. We have cytoskeleton microfilaments, which are these single thinner sort of bits of this scaffold or skeleton. They're called microfilaments and also microtubules, which are these cylindrical bits of scaffolding or skeleton that you can see running through lengthways and they're hollow in the middle, tubes, and therefore called microtubules. Now, because they're both formed from protein subunits, the protein subunits are globular, three-dimensional. They can be added and taken away easily. So the microtubules can grow as more protein subunits are added. And they can also shorten as microtubule subunit proteins are taken away. The microfilaments can grow as the protein subunits are added. And they can shorten as microfilament protein subunits are taken away. So the cytoskeleton is a dynamic structure. Let's actually have a look at those three components in a bit more detail. So the first component of the cytoskeleton that we've started to talk about already are microtubules. Microtubules are made of a protein called tubulin. Microtubules are involved in cell movement. They are what make up the flagella 
like the flagellum in the sperm that we looked at, and cilia, like the cilia on the paramecium cell that we looked at. That's where we find microtubules and some examples of their involvement. Microfilaments, the second type of cytoskeleton component, they're made up of protein subunits called actin. Microfilaments are involved in the cytoplasmic streaming that we talked about where chloroplasts move around the cell. Chloroplast orientation, where the chloroplasts are held in the right orientation to receive a maximum amount of light. Cytokinesis, where the cell cleaves itself into two during cell division. A process called phagocytosis, which we haven't talked about in this video. It's a type of endocytosis, which is where the cell actually engulfs another particle. It wraps its membrane around it. It almost looks like a mouth. It creates a membrane around the outside of a substance and then brings it in. It's like the cell is eating something. That occurs thanks to the work of microfilaments and it's explained in some other videos, endocytosis. And the other thing that microfilaments assist with is muscle contraction to help you with movement. So that's something to bear in mind. Contraction of muscles is thanks to the work of microfilaments inside of cells in the cytoskeleton. The last component is called intermediate filaments. Intermediate filaments are made of strong fibrous protein. So they're not like microtubules and microfilaments where they rapidly add subunits and take subunits away to grow and shorten. But what intermediate filaments are responsible for is strengthening cells that are subject to lots of wear and tear. A good example of that is skin cells. Skin cells go through all sorts of wear and tear, but they're really strong, and that's thanks to the work of intermediate filaments. So they're your three major components of the cytoskeleton. Let's just recap them. Microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. And let's quickly recap the main functions of the cytoskeleton. It maintains cell shape, it is involved in cell movement, both within the cell and the whole cell itself. It holds organelles in place and it strengthens cells. So guys, that's been the cytoskeleton. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. I hope it's helped. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time. In all of my videos, I use information and material from the Biology Levels of Life textbook, workbook and teaching notes. If you want any information on how to get hold of these, just leave a comment below or email me on jeremy.s.lacornu at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe if you want regular updates on my new videos. And as always, thanks so much for your support and positive feedback. I'm really glad that my videos are helping you.